I have always been a tinkerer and like love to take things apart. I had a frame loom when I was a tiny person and I spent a lot of time with it and I've always loved process. But I honestly found weaving by accident. I decided to sign up for this summer class of textile and weaving. Morning. Morning. The first day I walked into the room, I just was hooked to see the sunlight streaming in, these perfect rows of looms, and just that materiality of all of these different textures and colors of yarn. It had me spellbound. I mean, I think if I had a personal license plate, it would say Dreamweaver. <laughs> I had an idea of what figurative things needed to look like. Textiles that were figurative were often European tapestries, which are highly realistic, very figural flora and fauna exploding out of the surfaces of them. I'd been looking at West African traditions of weaving, which were almost entirely abstract. As a queer black person who is weaving, people were like, how does someone with all these identities find their way to something even more niche. After maybe the third time, someone was like, God, you're a unicorn. And so thinking about the unicorn as this exceptional, impossible creature, I started to think about a self-portrait. The unicorn kente is one of the first leaps I took away from abstraction because I needed so badly to weave this like figural thing. I had so much trepidation about introducing figures to the work, but I knew I needed to weave them. The drawings that I use to make the figures are based on my own body, but I don't necessarily think of them as myself. They're related to my experiences, but they can be vehicles for people to think about themselves and others in the world. I've been really curious as I've been weaving figures how to continue to make the poses interesting and dynamic, what ways the figures might flex or move and convey those motions to get that solidity across with these fragile, precious materials. Natural fibers have helped us both lift things, tear things down, move things. That like single strand is able to accomplish these great feats. This is one of a series of works that will use the rope. So in this case, it's just these two figures sort of wrestling with each other. Successive pieces will be more about pulling things down, like structures and raising things up, like tents. So how humans have used string and rope in both building and destroying things. I work in panels in part because of the constraints of the loom. When I work in the panel, I can create an image that I wouldn't otherwise be able to if I was working in just one piece. But this, I think, needs to go up to, like, here. OK. Diedrich he has a plan, but he also has this leeway of, like, letting the material kind of do its own thing. A lot of back and forth between his sketches and then what's happening on the loom and his spontaneous additions to the image. In the interaction between the human and the, like, mechanical of the loom, there's inevitable fallout from the framework, and we have to constantly be reacting to that. Once I sit down at the loom, it is, I don't know, I feel like I kind of like fall into it. I often tell people it's like, time travel or taking a long road trip. Like you just kind of, uh, like you, it feels like mentally I go somewhere else. It 
it is a full body experience. You use your legs and your arms and the rhythm of kind of pushing yarn backwards and forward. It just, it's meditative. The weaving techniques are mostly double weave, double weave pickup. I also do a lot of strip weaving and sewing things together to create larger compositions. The figure is woven in a supplemental warp and weft. So inside the structure of the cloth, there are these additional threads um, that I can call up at will. Um, and what they do is essentially hold the black yarn to the surface of the cloth wherever I want, as opposed to having to take the thread from end to end, I can kind of put it in in place, almost like a woven embroidery. So it's two weaving techniques kind of collapsed on top of each other. I think about the double weave, I can kind of push the figure into the foreground or have a horizon line or put shapes in the sky or in the ground by having those two layers. So it's color, uh, image, and depth, I think, for me. My grandmother taught me to sew when I was young, so I was always tinkering with these materials. I spent a lot of summers with my grandmother. She lives in the same house that I grew up going to in Mejia, Texas. Mejia is like a tiny town. It's a place where most everyone knows everyone. I mean, I think of myself as, you know, a child of this place. In 1981 at Lake Mejia, during a Juneteenth celebration, three young men were drowned in police custody. They were being transported across the lake, handcuffed in a boat that capsized. They were Stephen Booker, Carl Baker, and Anthony Freeman. I think it really shaped who I am and how I think about um, the world to be from that place. The catfish is a symbol that I work with a lot. And for me, it's become a symbol of the American South. And I've used it as a way to think about death, about transformation, about this creature that sort of can be above and below. The exhibition is a survey of Diedrich's use of the catfish motif in his poetry and weavings. Diedrich's work illustrates where someone who is deeply steeped in the history and the techniques of weaving can use them to create very contemporary, relevant narratives. The poems and the weavings are parallel practices that feed one another. Fish prayers are easy to answer, and the days pass quiet, so I sleep. Sometimes I dream of boys, they fall and flap, breaking open my glassy eye. They dance down deep into my belly where I can't cry them out. I try and fill their chests with breathe, God, brother. I don't know the words for save or swim. My catfish read them, suits of clouds. I started to think about the catfish as a way to signify this loss, to think about the energy of these young men being transmuted, thinking about how could I make the catfish special? How could I raise it up? How could I think about it as something worth weaving? I started thinking about how to make textile sculptural and inherent in basketry is form. I made a series of baskets and took them out into the natural environment to think about them as another means of navigating the world or escaping. The photographs allowed me to extend these narratives in visual ways that 
the textiles sometimes have to forego. I've just been in the studio dreaming of what I want the work to do, how I want it to grow and change, and just like further exploring what mastery of this medium is. I think I returned to the class of textile and weaving. I returned to that room in my mind a lot. And even now, it still feels like the most romantic occupation that I could have chosen. 